Thank you, Joel. Salamat po, Congresswoman. We'll bring you back yes. later. Please stand by. Okay, okay. okay. Thank Go you. Go now to our third speaker for this morning. Our third speaker is Chef Edison Monte de Ramos Manuel. He is a chef and owner of Adamo Restaurant, which opened 2016 up to the present. He is a graduate of nursing at DCLC Quezon City and a culinary graduate at First Gourmet Academy. He worked for Chateau Group and Moment Group as a line cook, a posenier at Mar Marcel in Los Angeles, California. He came back to open Adamo and has been an advocate of using local ingredients to promote sustainable farming, fishing, and the rotation of local resources. Ladies and gentlemen, Chef Edison Monte de Ramos Manuel. Chef. Hi, good morning. Good morning, everyone who's watching. First of all, I love your name. Napaka powerful. Gusto ko lang sabihin ulit, ha? Chef Edison Monte de Ramos Manuel. Parang pang artista, eh. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Chef, uh, I I know no, from from your uh, resume, you you actually have a very long history in the in the kitchen, no? Uh, yes. Sir. So, because you studied also, you've been with Chateau Group and Moments Group, no? I, I, is the Filipino cuisine part of your expertise? Uh, at first, it was really a struggle since mm -hmm. tayo mga Pinoy, uh, we've been cooking Filipino food ever since. So, we want to find something different, learn something different. But we came back to the Philippines 2016. Uh, business was a different game. So I have to offer familiar taste, but still I have to make my own uh, make my own experience useful. So I have to incorporate my experience with local flavors. How do you do that? Uh, maybe sa Adamo, what we did with Adamo. Uh, yeah. I have a all Filipino cook, so okay. mas magaling sila magluto ng Filipino food kaysa sa akin. So okay. I also gather uh, information from them how to make this, how to make that, and then I apply my own techniques too, like modern uh, cooking techniques. So with that, we get the locals to appreciate what we do, and we get we get also to make the things that you know we learned from before from our experiences. Um, ha, is Adamo going to offer special things for Christmas? Uh, this Christmas we're doing four course menu, but very limited seating capacity. So it's a prefix menu. Uh -huh. um, that's what we're doing most probably for Christmas. Oh, sige, sir. So uh, what, I believe you have a video. Can you tell us what the video is about? Uh, the video would be most likely showing uh, us cooking uh, food based on Dumaguete heritage, which is more on Spanish. If you have visited Dumaguete, sir, we have a lot of old Spanish houses along the boulevard. Mm -hmm. And we also have, uh, we have three dishes. We have the lecho de leche, we have kilawin, which is very local. We have the tuna, the very abundant dito sa amin. We have fishing towns here. So we have kilawin, we have the lecho de leche, which is uh, Spanish too, Spanish influence, and we have the brownies since we have Americans here too. Since so many different then. Apo, Dumaguete is one of the uh, top five places to retire in the Philippines. Wow, so retirement location. But, oh, sir, can we now show the video? Ah, uh, yes, sir. Okay, go ahead. Welcome to Kaina 2020. Today we are preparing three dishes. Lechon de leche, ceviche, or kilawit or kinilaw in Visaya. And we also have a chocolate fudge brownie with lati. 
So we're starting off with the chon de leche, which is our pachinilla. So what we did is we marinated this for five hours on the flesh side. But uh, uh, there's more flavor inside. But last minute, we're uh, also seasoning the skin portion. So to start off, I want to introduce our ingredients. So this is a sucking pig for, uh, I think this is less than two months old. What we're doing is we're seasoning the skin portion. So we'll start off with salt. Very basic seasoning, salt and pepper. But sometimes people put sugar, but we like to just stick with salt and pepper. Uh, the vegetables that we're using with lechon de leche are we're using garlic, we're using lemongrass, and we're also using onions. So the first side that we're going to cook is the skin side, just to render the fat on the uh, meat side portion. So we're putting lemongrass. Uh, I'll also introduce uh, my assistant for today. We have Mac from the Dumb House. We're using garlic. It's a bit crushed already. It doesn't really matter if you mince it or not. It's just used to uh, add aroma to it for something thick. So you notice I'm putting lots of vegetables on the pan. These are also the vegetables that, that we're going to use for the sauce from the juice from the something thing. So on the first side, we're just going to lay it uh, flat on the pan, skin side down, just like this. Then we're going to put a little bit of water so that it doesn't dry out and the skin doesn't stick to the pan, we'll put it on a plate. We're going to pop this in the boiler for about three to four hours, really depends. Uh, we just need to gauge on how cooked the meat inside is and of course we need to make the skin crispy and cold. Popping it in the oven for like two, four to five hours. It really depends. We'll see later. We're also preparing dessert. So what we're having is chocolate fudge brownie with batik. So to start off, we're uh, preparing two bowls. One for the chocolate mix and one for the dry ingredients. So we'll start off with the bittersweet chocolate, the tablea which is very local. We use this for uh, chocolate. We also have water, salas, that will be uh, tempering the eggs. And for the dry ingredients, we have brown sugar, we have flour, we have cocoa powder, we have white sugar, we have baking soda and baking powder. So to start off, you want to start with the chocolate. This might be a, a little big of a chunk, so we'll slice them in cubes so that they may melt uh, faster. Some would even shave it, but I think it melts really quick with the uh, memory. We'll start off with chocolate cubes. We put in there the tablea. So we'll start this off uh, by putting it on top of the boiling water. Not uh, necessarily uh, boiling. We just want the chocolate to melt with the butter. To melt it faster, you may want to put a lid on top of the chocolate. Then for the dry ingredients, we'll start off by straining all the flour to avoid lumps of flour, the baking soda, baking powder. And then uh, just mix them all. So we'll start off with flour. This is one cup of flour. This is cocoa powder. One fourth cup. This is white sugar. Three quarts cup is brown sugar, half cup. 
and you have the baking soda and baking powder. So what you do is just mix it. So now that we have the chocolate mix melted, uh, we're putting in the eggs, but just make sure the chocolate mix is not too hot unless you're making scrambled eggs. So you're pouring in uh, four pieces of uh, whole eggs. You might want the precious eggs for your brownie to eggs. So just temper the eggs. You don't really need the hot chocolate mix since you're also cooking the brownie in the oven. Then you're putting in the vanilla extra. more So when you mix the egg completely, you're putting in the dry ingredients. So you might see that gooey mix. You want that, but you want it mixed more. So now that we have a brownie mix, uh, we crank the oven to 350, 325, 350. Uh, make sure you heat your oven like 30 minutes before you put your brownie mix, just to make sure it rises properly and you cook the oven properly. So now we're putting the brownie batter. You want to line your pan with parchment, make sure it's oiled or anything just to avoid the brownie from sticking to the pan. So now that we have our brownie batter on our 12 by 12 pan, we want to avoid air bubbles. So just to pop out the air bubbles, you just want to drop your uh, pan on the table or you might uh, use the torch just to pop out all your bubbles. So we're uh, putting our brownie mix in the oven now. We're just going to wait for like 35 minutes. And we'll be easily checking just to make sure it's properly cooked. So now that our brownie is in the oven, we're just waiting for it to cook. We can make in advance our sauce for the, for the brownie. We have latik or uh, in English we call it coconut, yeah, uh, coconut cream curd. So it's like an over uh, cooked coconut, uh, coconut cream. We're just popping it in the pan. We're going to continue stirring this until it curds. Until coconut cream solid separate from coconut oil. So you can use the coconut oil. Lots of things you can try it with vegetables. Some mix it coffee. And coconut curd, gonna use it for a The appetizer we're preparing is yellow, kilo weight, ceviche. So the fish we're using is yellow pintuna. Yellow pintuna is very abundant by this time of the year. And you want the tuna that weighs between 60 to 100 plus tuna. It's a, uh, I think the umami flavor comes from the, that range. So you have the yellow pit tuna, make sure you remove it, remove the bloodline, remove the sinew, remove the uh, skin. So.
we're going to start by blocking it. The screen, uh, the skin is pretty tough, so it's easier to you just glide your knife or beneath the the meat. Make sure you have a very good view. You don't want to waste a lot of food. So now we're blocking it. Uh, most Filipinos, like a traditional Filipino, uh, they dice the tuna, but for us, we're going to cut it one inch by three inches. So, first, we're going to prepare the tuna. We're going to seal in the, the song. With, we're going to start by talking. Also make sure you wash your hands from time to time working with uh, raw ingredients. So now we have four nice fillets. So, uh, tuna loin. So you also want to use the, the tuna. While slicing the tuna, we're preparing the tuna. My assistant Matt is also preparing the. vinaigrette for the tuna. So laying tuna, you just want to seal in the natural case of the tuna. So I'll avoid it for uh, overcooking the vinegar. You seal it with uh, chef, chef. No, Hi, Chef. We will allow the video to play. I just uh, muted the audio because I had a connection problem from Manila, but we will allow it to play. Uh, so we can talk while the video is playing. I just want to ask you, lang, why did you choose, okay. choose these three recipes? The lechon de leche, the pizza, and the brownies. Uh, the quinilao, sir, is based on yeah. what we have here locally. So uh, we have fishing towns from the south where we get the freshest tuna for okay. Negros Oriental. So that's the, that's where I base the kilawin. And aside from it's very abundant this time of the year, it's also very local, yung kinila. Oh. We have different versions all over the Philippines, but we always have kinila with lechon. Kinila with lechon, you know, per perfect pairing sa'yo. Yes, sir. Uh, we even have a town that serves only kinila and lechon and tinola. Ah, oh. oh, talaga? Uh, in, in sa Samuangita. So, uh, ano, ang, yeah. ano ang main protein? Isa lang ba parati bang Ano main protein ng ano mo? Kinilaw? Uh, here, sir, we use tuna, but we can also use tangige or uh, the marlin, the marlin line. The marlin. Mm. Okay. Uh, it, it, it's, uh, you call it uh, ceviche, uh, but also kinilaw ang Filipino. Uh, yes, do you think it's a it's a local dish talaga o influence lang talaga siya? Kasi meron nagsasabi na una sa Pilipinas yung kinilaw eh, bago pa dumating yes, yung mga Panyol. So, what is your belief? I believe it could be really Spanish influence. But okay. 
Yeah, but most Filipino dishes are mostly Spanish influence po kasi din. Uh-huh. But yeah, it's it's hard to point out actually. <laughs> oh, tama. So anyway, that is an argument that continues to be made in the yes, culinary sir. landscape, no? Kung talaga bang Filipino 'yan o Spanish influence. Kasi merong naniniwala na may kinilaw na bago pa siya uh, Sir, let's talk about the lechon de leche. Uh, what makes it different in in your place? Uh, lechon de leche. Yeah. Uh, it's actually more uh, based on Spanish influence. Okay. Not too different from other lechon de leche, but I think every region has their own versions. Okay. Uh, I can tell it's the usual version. It's just the size of pig that you know differs there are uh, differentiates from uh place to place probably mabenta ba like pasko na so t- definitely lechon de leche is a star of the noche buena table diba yes sir mm. so do you have pre orders already uh, i did not accept pre orders for lechon de leche okay. this- okay. uh we were doing private buyouts but it's more on a course meal, the things we do for buyouts. It's not more on the buffet style because we want to keep the diner safe, the guests safe for outside catering. So we'd rather have the plated dishes. Uh, um, I don't know if you want to answer this, but how much would one lechon de leche like that cost? Probably around, for a restaurant price, probably around 6,000 to 7,000. And can feed how many people? Probably around 8 to 10, sir. 8 to 10. No? Pero pagka naman nasa lamesa mo yan na Noche Buena, eh, masayang-masaya ang Pasko mo, hindi ba? <laughs> Sabi mo kanina, how long does it cook in the oven? 4 to 5 hours? Uh, 3 to 4 hours, but really depends, sir. Kasi we use the smoker sa outdoor ng Adamo. Probably uh-huh. if you have the the convection oven, it would be faster. Mm-hmm. But we're using uh, charcoal lang outside, so it's semi traditional. Oh. Uh next struggle talaga yung video natin. Guys, maybe uh, can can another person with a better connection share it while we're talking and then move it towards the end so that we can see the final product. Kasi I really love to see your final product, no? Nanaluto na siya. So, um yun namang uh, let's talk about your brownie. I mean, uh yes, yung latik, I actually have never seen it also. Na meron siyang uh, latik on top. Uh, how did that idea come about? Latik because uh, like Occidental, we also have the sugar, maraming uh, sugar cane fields din ng Negros. Uh-huh. Uh, we also have the coconut uh, plantations here, actually abundant. Uh-huh. In, so we're using the local ingredients to represent the dish. At the same time, brownie was uh, like the first recipe that I cooked since I started my cooking career. It was your first recipe? So parang signature dish mo na rin ba siya? Yes, sir. Yung nung bago pa lang po. <laughs> nung bago pa. I know, pero is it a permanent part of your but, of yeah, Adamo? Every Christmas, we use that. We, use, uh, we make brownies for giveaways, for yeah. family gatherings. Apo. One of the things that I remember in Dumaguete is yung parang, parang baywalk nyo. Na, na malapad na malapad na kalye. What do you the call boulevard. that nga ba? Uh, huh? The boulevard, sir. The boulevard. So, uh, Paano walang social distancing? Walang, ano, pwede pa rin bang gamitin doon? Maglakad-lakad uh, doon? Ngayon po, they were limiting the number of people going sa boulevard. So, in, meron din po tayong police, uh, tourist police na baban, binabantayan kung how how crowded the boulevard is, which is hindi talaga pwede. Uh, uh, kailangan talaga naka-social distance. Everyone was merry, wearing masks, even the restaurants, naka-social distance. Uh-huh. And, Early din po kami nag-close. We still follow the, the, ang tawag dito. Uh, we close around 8.39 o'clock p.m. The curfew. Okay, so, i- 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 ano ko lang, change gears lang tayo ng konti. Um, because uh, one of the most badly hurt uh, in this pandemic is the brick and mortar restaurants. No, This is actual no. restaurants like what you have. Mm. Uh, I mean, it's a sad story. O baka naman may happy story ka. Kamusta ang Adamo? Uh, it was a struggle at first. Uh, uh-huh. Everyone was trying to learn how to make it with the pandemic going on. Uh-huh. But I think what helped Adamo or other local restaurants is our rela- relationship to the local community. So the locals are very helpful sa amin. We, we post every time on social media na we'd rather have people 
uh, dahil sa mga bahay nila and we will deliver. And at, and by that way, people appreciate that we care for them. Uh-huh. So, okay pa rin naman po yung orders. Maybe more on takeaways. And because we have socially distanced tables and chairs din sa restaurant. But with the, kasi hindi po kami nag-deliver before, but with plus the delivery, I think, yeah, we survived. It's actually how we show compassion to the locals and the locals are helping us. At least may pang sweldo, no? Opo. Diba? <laughs> So what is your what is your plan moving forward? Uh this December. Actually for next year, sir, we're still uh catering mostly to the pharmaceutical companies because we're also giving to the uh healthcare workers. So uh-huh. it's the farm companies are a big help din po sa amin. Uh, also the locals, because we don't have you the tourists. That's, that's catering uh, for the pharma, catering yon. Uh, semi-catering, sir. Well, we deliver some mga hospitals. Uh, you deliver. Na, I mean, like in food trays. And then you yeah. deliver. Them. Okay. At least, at least, kahit pa paano nga, sabi mo nga, uh, meron kang uh, napagkukuna ng revenue even despite okay. the pandemic. Okay, sir. Uh, what would be your your real best sellers in Adamo? On a regular uh, basis. It's a menu that changes, sir. We change the dishes, not actually the whole menu, but we depend on the ingredients, on what's locally available. So we have our best sellers, but sometimes quite best sellers, so we can't serve this anymore because it's not available. But for this uh, time of the year, uh-huh. I can't really say pork is seasonal, but we have the smoked pork belly with pancit, which is... Uh, for a mix up with Western and Asian influences, because we have the pancit, which is very pork Filipino. Pork belly with pancit, hindi pancit with pork belly. Ibig sabi mas marami yung pork belly kaysa sa pork, pancit. Uh-huh. So the ah, pork was, and like a uh, thick bacon cuts on top of the pancit. Ah, uh, okay. Parang uh, pork and beans, pero sa yung talaga mas marami yung pork kaysa dun uh-huh. sa <laughs> beans. Interesting. How long has Adamo been on? Uh, we've been open for five years now, sir. Okay. Ah, uh, yung yung video mo is this is this towards the end na malapit na ba siyang mag ano? Uh, uh, going towards the eh, opo. Uh, I think after this would be the final product for the election. But I okay. think we can move like mga two minutes siguro, sir. Uh, so we can see the final product. Can you move forward a little? Because I really want to see the election in its, all of its golden, crispy glory. Ikakat mo ba later on para marinig namin ng crunch? <laughs> huh? yes, apa, apa. How how was it um uh working abroad? Uh for a young cook that's very uh let's say passionate and adventurous with uh the young found passion. I think it was really an adventure working in in LA. Uh-huh. It's the first time I lived outside of our family home, and wow. same time learning new, you know, the the things that I want to learn about cooking. Na hindi ko mahanap uh, here locally. I found it there, then I applied it here. So it's it's it was really nice living alone there, learning how to live with uh, different uh, cultures. Diversity was really nice, and yeah, it was really nice. Uh, I'm really. I don't know. We're looking for the for the final product so we can show it to the audience. Okay. Okay. Uh, chef, yung difference naman ng culture. Ni sabi mo nga, medyo difficult to go to the states. So ano ba na una, nung nasa moments at saka siya to group ka? These are big chain uh, uh, restaurant groups, no? Of chains. So ano ba? I mean, is there a cultural difference? Was it easier to work with a foreign company than a local company, or vice versa? Yeah. Uh, almost is uh, it's it's quite different, but still the kitchen culture is there. But I guess that Filipinos are more compassionate towards your work uh, workmates. Tignan mo yung yeah. chef. Oh my god! <laughs> oh, pwede mo na iyan no? I ojo yan. I want to I want to hear the crack. Okay. Hola. Sorry, chef. Nagaka connection okay. problem. But uh. Uh, thank you for the effort of, of showing us the, the food. Uh, I guess we will really have just to go to Adamo and taste the food, your food. 
Thank you so much, Sir Joel. But Sir, last ni lang, before I let you go, and then come back again for the panel. Aside from the food, is there any special tradition in Dumaguete when it comes to Christmas? When it comes to Christmas, sir, we yeah. have the early breakfast here. So, uso po yung simbang gabi. Okay. And every morning after simbang gabi, after madaling araw, we have, sa public nar- market namin, we have the puto chocolate corner. So, everyone gathers there to eat puto at chocolate. Ah, uh, okay. It's like signature, one of the signature food of Dumaguete. Ma- ah, okay. So, at tubo, tubo ka ba dyan? Tubo, Dumaguete ka talaga? Uh, I left after high school. I went to Manila. So, my dad is from Pampanga. Uh-huh. Who taught me how to cook. And my mom is from Dumaguete. Uh, so, you have the best of both worlds. Maruma yes. ka rin ng Pampanga dishes. Apo. Uh, kaya magaling ka. <laughs> anyway. Okay, Chef. So at this point, uh, thank you very much. We'll bring you back later at the panel. Please stand by. All right? Thank you so much, Sir Joel. Okay, so I'll now, cue, I'll now cue our next uh, speaker. Our next speaker is a very lively person. Siya ang tamang-tamang kape para sa umagang ito. She, uh, she 